what safety means to me uh, is being able to be comfortable moving throughout life or moving throughout circumstances without the fear of the unknown. Safety is not just about your physical well-being, but it's very heavily reliant on your emotional well-being. So for me, when I think about safety, I think about aspects of mental health. I think about having community. I think about having alliances that you can go to. I think that at this day and age, uh, the current youth justice system uh, is lacking representation that can show that if somebody did go through an incident, a circumstance uh, during their youth and their time that they have a way to be, uh, to, to excel and move past it. When I think about reimagining safety, especially away from incarceration, I think about humanizing young people. I think sometimes when it comes to young people, especially teenagers, they go through a specific phase in life. And when it comes to that phase, oftentimes we tend to just isolate them and leave them to the system to correct them or to quote, quote, rehabilitate them or redirect their behavior. The problem with this is that a lot of times we are putting our youth at risk. So when we incarcerate youth, what we don't understand and the negative effects that we don't see is the trauma behind incarceration. So that can look like sexual abuse, but it can also look like putting students, young people, with other offenders who have other traumas. So now we're trauma bonding instead of actually healing and actually creating a safe environment for those young people. I feel like if a juvenile is, is taken out of his environment and then placed in a different environment, he shouldn't have different things antagonizing him. You know, he should be able to completely, like, I don't know, elevate in that environment to the point where when he gets out, he's not even at the same point where he was at when he went in to be acting out as that way. We really do have a cradle to prison pipeline. When you look at the impact of trauma, how trauma can literally alter a young person's brain as young as infancy, and then how when our school systems are not equipped with trauma-informed practices and trauma-informed learning models, the manifestation of that trauma then leads to discipline, and discipline leads to a young person's self-esteem being damaged and being labeled, which leads to juvenile justice involvement, which leads to criminal justice involvement, which ultimately leads to young people having worse outcomes. And because taking strictly punishment-based approaches actually leads to more recidivism, less public safety. Community-based operations, organizations, programming services are best suited to see the needs of the youth the families in a holistic way. And I think that that needs to be at the forefront of lawmakers. The subject of mental health is absolutely at the, at the forefront of the overall growth trajectory for youth that are involved in uh, some systems. Uh, however, I think the the way of approaching uh, mental health for the, a certain population is to not force them to be in your domain, but be willing and recognize that, hey, you can support healing from trauma, support uh, co-concurrent uh, diagnosis. Uh, it's, it's best suited in spaces where you're young folks or individuals that have been system involved feel comfortable being open to sharing. Those spaces, for how, how we try to approach it is through barbershops, through boxing gyms, through music studios. Pro providing the envir environment for them to just explore their passions, 
and strengths, and then they're able to adapt those into work within the advocacy realm. Um, and also allows them to build like confidence and self-awareness to provide healthy uh, self-expression is one thing that I've noticed as well within my work. Um, I'm an artist, so I felt like that was like a really big thing for me when I was able to engage with policy through art advocacy. Um, and so we have a lot of students that I've been able to watch build confidence who like we're afraid to speak or get involved. Like I'm a firm believer of um, just holding down the people who are doing this work already because it's been done. We, we're not the first communities who are dealing with violence. We're not the first communities that are dealing with grief. We're not, th this is like a generational issue. And I think that means we have to address what's been going on in the past, like it, through a historic lens and also build. And that's where the intergenerational conversations come in, where we hold circles, where we bring youth into ceremonies, you know, bring them into these different modalities of healing and connecting them with elders, connecting them with community members, connecting them with legislators who are willing to teach our young people what the routes of creating change actually takes. We have to greatly reconsider and transform the approach to discipline to prioritizing addressing the root causes of student behavior, of addressing a young person's social, emotional, behavioral, academic, and mental health needs. If you are proactive in addressing those needs, you're going to have fewer misbehaviors because you're getting to the root of the things that make pe young people act out. Still, young people do get into conflicts. Young people are just learning how to manage conflicts. It's going to happen. So at another level, you have to embed restorative practices, mediation, those types of models within the continuum. It doesn't always have to be punishment. If we truly believe in rehabilitation and we truly want young people to do better, you would have a welcoming circle when that young person came back into the community, where that young person could talk about what they've learned. They could talk about how things can be different and members of that school community could say, this is how we'll help you do that. When it comes to youth safety, I want people to not just see these young people as juvenile offenders and not to just see them as people who belong in the system because they're quote, quote, troubled kids, but really look into perspective of not only how would you want your child to be raised, but how would you have wanted to be raised when you were young? So really putting it into that perspective allows us to not only humanize the youth and empathize with them, but really invest in them in a different way.